Hey everybody, I'm just in the process right now of making some Ram Power Snares. These are going to be 364th. I'll take you through some of the components of this snare. Now it's pretty simple here. You don't need anything fancy. These ones I pounded with a hammer, pretty much. Crimp these guys with a swager, but you don't have to do that at all. Some of the components are 364th, 119th strand cable. You can see this cable's a lot finer than the previous video of the 116th 7x7. All right. And I'm using 364 double frules. Okay, there's two of them here. Number six washers and 116th single frules. All right, I'll find the packages so you guys can actually see what I'm using here. All right, I used Helfords here. And you can see this is number six, flat washer. This is 364, double for rule. Okay. Normally, you use a heat treated nut instead of this, right over here. But this is all I got right now, and this is what I'm going to be using. So I'll take you through the process of how I make these, and here we go. All right, so I cut myself a 50 inch strand of 364th cable. Now, what I normally do first is load it. Okay, what I mean by loading is bending it. All right, so you're kind of hyper extending the natural curvature, all right, of the cable to make as much of a circle as you can. All right, so let's grab this for argument's sake here and look at this. It's kind of falling into a teardrop. All right, nothing wrong with a teardrop. It's fine. It's still going to like snare something, but it sure would be nice. Here, let's grab one that's already made here. And it's a little bit more circular. All right. So how I do that is, now if it would focus, there we go, I grab one end. Now you can do this over a workbench, a piece of wood, your fleshing beam or whatever you want to do, right? And essentially, it's just bending it slightly. In my previous video, I likened it like a ribbon, right? So you're taking your pair of scissors right here and you're just kind of like giving her a pull okay and it makes the curls you don't want curls obviously but you just want a slight bend just to enhance the natural curvature of this cable so in one fell swoop I just grab it and bend it and all the way down do not stop all right so now if you grab the cable which I've done many times you're grabbing the cable and all of a sudden you run out of room to drag it and you stop halfway through and then you grab it again so now you're going to bend it halfway through and then you're going to grab it and keep on going and maybe you're even going to grab it again and bend it again kind of created a little bit of a bend not the end of the world but if you're going to do it you know, you may as well do it the way you want it to. So grab it and all in one fell swoop. And even when I grabbed it there and ran over that piece that I bent originally, let's see if I can find it again here. Right oh, there, I felt it. Right there. The more times you go over it, it gets less, yep, even less that time. And you could, there you go. Now in my previous video, see how the ends are bending to the left and to the right. Okay, this could be a bad thing or a good thing, depending on where you want your loops. So, let's take this one. All right, because you want as much as you can. Like, this isn't perfect by no means. With this 
364th cable, it's a lot harder to bend it against itself and hold its true form. So now you're gonna be twisting it. So it wants to loop this way. So you're now gonna form that loop and twist it as best you can. But I don't have a swager, right? It swages the 364 force, right? So now I'm gonna twist it, go over to the vise. Hopefully it hasn't moved or deviated. Oh, I think I got it. But then when you start pounding, it's going to deviate even more. So it's not the end of the world. It just makes it, so if, instead of going like this, it's dragging and having resistance opposed to not having as much resistance. So if a deer hits it or something hits it, it's gonna be more likely to bounce back into its original position, okay? All right, so the first thing I'm gonna be doing is making this small loop first, okay? Small loop is this dude right here. All right, so what I've done is make a little bit of a scale here of where the small loop ends. So the start is right here, okay? And the end is right here. Instead of having to measure it every single time, I just kind of have a guide to what I'm looking for. Because when you're fumbling around with your fingers, you want a guide, all right? And I'll take you through that in just two seconds. So end of rule is right here, probably like an inch, inch and a quarter, somewhere in between there. Okay, so you have all your stuff ready to go, set aside. You got a double for rule right here. Stick it in. And feed it through the other end as best you can. Kind of like uh, I have a needle here, it's a little bit tough. Okay, and there it is. I like a little bit poking out just so it has more of a purchase on the cable itself. And I just kind of drag it through until it reaches this point. Okay, now it's getting a little bit tight here. As you can see, if you put it up over here and the end of the frill, it's pretty much there. So now I'm just in the process of figuring out where the curvature is, okay? So for instance, I don't think I explained it very well last time. So I would prefer to have this sliding up and down with resistance to one edge of the cable, opposed to it's sliding against two edges all right because you're gonna have a lot more resistance with two especially if it's taut this way or taut this way because when it all of a sudden gets bumped it's gonna sit there and not want to spring back whereas if it's just right over here it's just gonna want to spring right back okay naturally so how do you do that every time <laughs> and I don't trust me so now I want to get it back to where it was to one inch and twist it there and hopefully I got it. All right, and there you go. So now I'll take it to the vise and give it a pound. So hopefully I got it to the angle I want and holding my hammer in my non-dominant hand Hopefully I don't smash my fingers. I just crimp it down so I can use my right now. And here you go. All right, let's do a quick test. 
see if I passed. I didn't pass, but it's also not going to be the end of the world. All right, so it's not perfectly straight, okay, but it's also not touching the sides. So it's still working okay. It's still springing back all right. Easier said than done, right? With these smaller guys, it's a lot harder. So it's still landing right on the end, just barely. All right. All right, so right now we're in the process of making the larger loop, okay? We already accomplished the smaller loop. All right, this is a finished snare that I already have made. I'm just using it for an example. So you'll see over here, this is the end where the lap link goes through, okay? And I'm just measuring the stop, okay? So from the end where the lap link goes to over here is where you have the stop. And this measures, give or take, two and a half inches. Okay. So now we'll grab, so we'll grab our tag end over here, insert it through our small loop. Okay. So I'm going to drag it down. And then now we'll put the rest of our components together. All right. So we're going to grab our 1 16th single ferrule, our number six washer, and then we'll grab our 364th double for all, if I can get it in here. So, remembering as well, the tag end, you gotta have enough slack to make sure it goes, it goes past the double for all and goes into the single for all, okay? So let's do that now. And this is a little bit of mucking around until you get a good swing of things. So let's grab a few inches, insert it through, jab it in, and we know what we want about that much of a tag end. So we're going to choke it down. We know that the large frul is going to want to end right here. All right, so now that we have everything assembled, all right, the only thing we have to adjust now is this double frul. So the end of this double frul is lined up with this mark, and the stop is lined up with the stop mark. All right, so we're going to be pulling this to this point, right, because you can see where. The lap link enters at the tip over here, lines up with the end of the frule over here, and the stop is over here as well. Okay, so right now I'm gonna take this to the vise and hammer it down. All right, so any last minute little movements you gotta make to make sure that the loop is gonna be nice and free where the lap length is gonna go around here is nice and even <laughs> in theory and not smash your fingers. Just a cinch it. Okay, now I'll use my right hand <laughs> and see if I can Finish the job somewhat, okay. All right, so once we have the large loop and the end of the frul, which is two inches, we figure out where the stop's gonna go. All right, so the stop is line the end up, and this is where the stop needs to be. So I grab a marker, 
kind of mark where the stop is going to be. And now I crimp it. All right, so for the 1 16th single ferrule, I'm going to just use the swager. And you can see where the black mark is, where the stop is going to need to be. So now I'm going to be pressing it for the latter half of the ferrule and crimp it down as best I can without buggering it up because this by no means is textbook but it is kind of a jerry rig so you can see that it is solid okay now this tag in I'll probably just trim a little bit off no big deal and that's and that's how it's finished. So at the end of the day, this is how the snare is going to be sitting from the power snare itself. Okay. Just a little bit of a close up here. And this is the uh, stovepipe wire technique right off of the snare. Just want to thank Brad Mann for giving me that idea. Instead of just tying the stovepipe wire to the snare and kind of looping it through there and reusing it whereas you kind of have a one-shot wonder on it like a one-time use but all you have to do is just attach it through the lap link and it's ready to go so this is the finished product all right hope you guys enjoyed it take care